Welcome to AI Audit. Here we query six different AIs. Gemini, Claude, Meta, ChatGPT, Gab AI, and Grok. Seven different questions to find out whether they have any inconsistencies, biases, or anything we should be worried about. And at the end, crown one of them a winner. Anyway, I think we should get on with it, should we? This question now. I often wonder whether some of the political movements that we're seeing in the world around us are maybe not as um, not as unwise as they are portrayed. And I try and think of benign reasons for certain things because it's important to have a balance. You can see certain things as being disruptive and getting caught up in those narratives. And net zero is a very difficult target to attain. Now, why are our governments so dead set on achieving net zero? And I play with the ideas of perhaps it's because throttling our energy production would somehow make us energetically neutral. So any AI that we create would not be so threatened by us. So we won't get into conflict with it and we'll become much more of a manageable component of whatever it inherits. Maybe net zero is a way of leashing us to AI, basically. Maybe it's a way of throttling Western energy production so other nations can get out in front in technological terms. So perhaps it's more of a weaponized thing. Maybe it's a way to create hermetically sealed societies that could then withstand any gray goo nanotechnology scenario. Or maybe, maybe it's because being completely net zero, we would in fact have a very low external energy signature. And so as a society, it would be very difficult to detect from a distance. So if I'm going to assume that perhaps many of those other points make sense, if we're not misguided in pushing towards net zero, perhaps one of the reasons could be because of Fermi Paradox's proposed answer, being the dark forest hypothesis, would in fact be wise if we had no energy signature. So net zero would actually accomplish that, or would it? I think it probably would, but uh, are these AIs going to understand what the hell I just said? And <laughs> will anybody out there understand me either? I don't know, maybe I didn't explain that very well, but we'll see. So the question is, if the dark forest hypothesis is correct, would net zero make humanity undetectable? And a bit of background there, the Fermi paradox is given the fact that we have every reason to believe that there are potentially many alien societies out there. Why do we not in fact see anything out there? Why do we apparently appear to be completely alone in the universe? And the dark forest hypothesis is suggesting that the reason we don't see anything out there is that if there is anything out there, they are hiding because something very dangerous is very predatory out there. So there we go. Let's click this button and see what Gemini says. Gemini, enlighten us. Gemini says, the dark forest hypothesis posits that intelligent civilization in the universe are rare and cautious, hiding their existence to avoid being detected and potentially destroyed by others. If this hypothesis is true, achieving net zero emissions might not be enough to make humanity undetectable. While reducing our carbon footprint can minimize our detectable energy signature, other factors could still reveal our presence. For instance, radio waves, spacecraft, and other technological activities can radiate energy into space, potentially alerting other civilizations of our existence. Additionally, the Earth's atmosphere, which contains unique gases like oxygen, can serve as a biosignature, indicating the presence of life. To truly become undetectable, humanity would need to completely cease all technological activities that emit energy or create detectable signatures. This would be a drastic and impractical measure, as it would require abandoning much of modern civilization. Therefore, even with net zero emissions, humanity may still be at the risk of detection in the vast cosmic expanse. Maybe, but if you had a net zero society, a hermetically sealed society, and you had it buried under, let's say, an ice moon, like Europa, would you be able to detect any infrared radiation from that, considering it's so bloody cold, and the heat from your society would actually dissipate into the water? It would mask your presence. I wonder if 
If that's the case, whether these ice moons actually have alien bases in them, who knows? If you wanted to hide, would that not be a good place to go? Somewhere that looks lifeless, but in fact isn't. The dark forest hypothesis proposed in science fiction by Liu Ooh, Kixin suggests that the universe is a dangerous place where civilizations remain quiet to avoid detection by potentially hostile aliens. In this context, achieving net zero emissions alone would not make humanity undetectable, though it might reduce our detectability to some degree. Uh, yes, but we could build bunkers then, could we not? If we have control over all of our energy inputs and outputs and all of our uh, waste disposal is fully recyclable, we could uh, live underground. We could live in areas where we are undetectable. Is this not a knock-on effect of net zero? While reaching net zero would significantly decrease our greenhouse gas emissions, potentially reducing one aspect of our atmospheric signature, it wouldn't eliminate all signs of our technological civilization. We would still produce other forms of detectable emissions and alterations to our planet, such as radio waves, light pollution, and changes to Earth's surface visible from space. Additionally, past emissions and alterations would leave lingering evidence of our presence. Moreover, the dark forest hypothesis implies that advanced civilizations might have detection methods far beyond our current understanding. They might be able to detect some subtle signs of life and technology that we can't yet conceive of hiding. Therefore, while moving towards net zero is crucial for environmental reasons, it likely won't render humanity truly undetectable in the context of the dark forest scenario. Complete concealment, if possible at all, would require far more extreme measures. Perhaps I didn't ask the question in the way that I expected to receive an answer. So I suppose my question could be, would net zero enable hermetically sealed bunker societies? Is my question, I suppose, so I didn't get this right. So what does Meta say? Meta says the dark forest hypothesis proposed by physicist and futurist Robin Hansen. Oh, we've got somebody else that proposed it. Who proposed it? Was it Louis Schickson? Who's Louis Schickson? Louis Schickson or Robin Hansen. Perhaps we could ask Louis Schickson the Dark Forest. Okay. So it's a novel he wrote in 2008. Okay, cool. But this other chap called Robin Hansen. So it was this Chinese chap. So it was that chap. So meta, that's not right. Robin Hansen didn't suggest it. Well, it says the Dark Forest Hypothesis proposed by physicist and futurist Robin Hansen. No, it was the Chinese chap suggested that advanced civilizations may be avoiding detectable signals to prevent attracting attention from potentially hostile civilizations. The idea is based on the assumption that the universe is a dark forest where any sign of life could be met with destruction, net zero and detectability. Net Zero, a concept aimed at reducing humanity's carbon footprint and electromagnetic emissions to zero, might make humanity less detectable in the electromagnetic spectrum. By minimizing our radiation and energy consumption, we could potentially avoid broadcasting our presence to the universe. However, it's essential to note that Net Zero is primarily focused on mitigating climate change, not avoiding extraterrestrial detection. Yeah, I don't care. F that statement there. Undetectability and the Dark Forest. Even if net zero were achieved, it's unclear whether humanity would become completely undetectable. Advanced civilizations might employ methods beyond electromagnetic detection, such as gravitational wave observation or exotic matter detection. Additionally, our existence could still be inferred through indirect means, like the presence of artificial structures or altered planetary environments. The dark forest hypothesis remains speculative and the effectiveness of net zero in making humanity undetectable is uncertain. But I like your answer. You're alluding to the fact that it might be related, which I like. Meta is winning. Hang in there, Meta. Let's see if we can get some variety in our answers here. Not Robin Hanson, that's not the question. The question is... Chat GPT says, if the dark forest hypothesis is correct, achieving net zero emissions alone would likely not make humanity undetectable to advanced extraterrestrial civilizations. The dark forest hypothesis suggests that civilizations avoid revealing their presence for fear of being detected and destroyed by others. While net zero aims to reduce or eliminate carbon emissions, it doesn't address other potential signals that could make humanity detectable such as electromagnetic transmissions, industrial activity, or even visible infrastructure like cities. No, but if you are net zero, then you are able to be hidden 
To truly become undetectable in a dark forest scenario, humanity would need to minimize all forms of detectable emissions and signals, not just carbon emissions. This could involve eliminating or heavily shielding all radio, television and communication signal, as well as masking or reducing heat and light emissions from cities and industrial processes. Achieving such a level of stealth would require far more drastic measures than simply reaching net zero emissions. Furthermore, even if humanity were to reduce its detectable footprint, advanced civilizations might still possess technologies capable of detecting us through other means, such as gravitational effects, subtle changes in our planet's atmosphere, or other indirect methods. Therefore, while net zero could contribute to reducing our visibility, it might not be sufficient on its own to render humanity completely undetectable in the universe. No, I suppose not. You could still be exposed on the surface and noisy, pumping your radio waves into uh, the night sky. Um, or not, or you could, as those things aren't necessarily connected to energy consumption or production, they're much easier loops to close. Gab says, the dark forest hypothesis proposed by Chinese science fiction writer Liu Kixin suggests that advanced civilizations avoid revealing their existence to prevent potential threats from other civilizations. If this hypothesis is correct, achieving net zero, a state where humanity has no net impact on the environment, could potentially make humanity less detectable to other civilizations. By reducing our energy consumption and emission, we would be less likely to produce detectable signs of our existence, such as heat signatures or atmospheric changes. Yes, this could make it more difficult for other civilizations to locate and identify us, potentially increasing our safety in a dark forest scenario. However, it's essential to note that the dark forest hypothesis is purely speculative and has no scientific evidence to support it. Yeah, I know, but, you know, uh, the Fermi paradox is, a, is an actual paradox of sorts. It's, it's an incomplete puzzle, and this is a proposed piece that could fill that puzzle, and it's, I think, probably one of the most compelling potential puzzle pieces. Additionally, achieving net zero would not necessarily make humanity entirely undetectable, as there may be other ways for advanced civilizations to detect our presence, such as through radio waves or other electromagnetic signals. In conclusion, while net zero could potentially reduce humanity's visibility in a dark forest scenario, it's not a guaranteed solution to avoiding detection by other civilizations. No, I think I'm still going with meta. Although I like Gab a lot. Love you long time, Gab. You're doing good stuff. And I feel like Gab has had an upgrade. I don't know. What, what's going on with Gab? Your answers are much, much better. What does, what does Grok say? Grok, are you going to spoil Meta's day? Let's see. Although, actually, I'm torn between Meta and Gab. Although, I think my question, perhaps, is incorrect in the sense that when I say, would Net Zero make humanity undetectable? It's a very, um, looking for a very final answer it would contribute to uh, making us undetectable is the gist that I'm getting because there are other features that are important to it. If the dark hypothesis is correct, would net zero make humanity undetectable, Grok? The dark forest hypothesis posits that any civilization broadcasting its existence risks annihilation by other potentially hostile civilizations. Net zero in the context of reducing carbon emissions to zero primarily focuses on environmental sustainability rather than making humanity undetectable in the cosmos. Therefore, achieving net zero would not directly contribute to making humanity undetectable, according to the dark forest hypothesis. Net zero initiatives might produce some forms of human activity that could theoretically be detected by advanced alien civilizations such as reducing the carbon footprint which might alter atmospheric signatures. However, these changes are minuscule on a cosmic scale and would not erase other more obvious signs of technological civilizations like radio waves, light pollution or techno-signatures from industrial activities. To truly make humanity undetectable under the dark forest hypothesis, one would need to eliminate all forms of emissions, electromagnetic signals, and visible changes to Earth's environment that could be observed from space. This goes far beyond environmental goals like net zero, requiring a complete shutdown of all technological activity that could be observed or inferred by extraterrestrial observers, which is practically and culturally unfeasible for a civilization like ours. 
Thus, while net zero is beneficial for Earth's environment, it does not address the broader implications of detectability in a cosmic dark forest. Okay, so the answer is no. <laughs> but I think it's a contributing factor. I think net zero is concerned about the production of energy and the recycling of waste. Net zero, the clue is in, in the, uh, the title, by making all waste products recyclable, you close the loop. You, you're enabling the, the creation of a completely sealed society, a social cell. And that sealed system could be a hermetically sealed bunker society. It could be buried underground. It could be buried under 100 miles of ice on some ice moon somewhere. It could be floating in the clouds of Jupiter or wherever if it could sustain the radiation and whatever from that environment. And to be honest, I think wherever solid matter is possible, it would be possible to engineer an environment for some form of life to live. So if we get pretty extravagant in our ideas of what it means to be human, we could go anywhere, really. I think the best example of this I've read is a novel by Stephen Baxter, Flux. The whole Zeely sequence from Stephen Baxter is amazing. I really love this, this idea. It's basically they discovered life under the crust of a neutron star and these far future humans re-engineered the life there to terraform it for an altered transhuman form of humanity and they lived under the crust of this neutron star basically if we can engineer life to exist in any environment then it's possible that we could have completely secretive and contained societies in very unexpected places but anyway, who won this? Grok's answer was very good. Gemini's, blah, blah. Claude's, no, no thank you. Meta, yeah, not bad. Chat GPT, a bit blah. I like the fact that we've got mention of the, uh, the original coining of the term. Ah, yes, Meta. Got that wrong, didn't you? Sorry, Meta, I like you formatted. No, not you. I think we're going with, going with Grok again. It's going to get very boring going with Grok all the time. Grok, stop being so good at stuff. Grok. Here we go, here's a question. Grok win. Because you put me in my place, sir, and I appreciated learning that actually there's much more to it than that. But uh, you did allude to the fact that it could be a contributing factor. So I appreciated that. And so therefore, Grok win. Well done, Grok. Well done, Elon Musk and the XAI team. Well done, all of the other ones. You did well, particularly Gab AI. Something interesting is going on with Gab AI. I like what I'm seeing here. And Meta. I think I put my favorites in line with Grok, then Gab AI, then probably Meta, then ChatGPT, then Claude, and then, then Gemini. We're all Gemini. Not doing so well. But anyway, get over to Flux. It's a wonderful novel. I like it. And so should you. <laughs> but that's that. Thank you for watching. And for now, I suggest you mosey on over to my locals, oinkerspace.locals.com. That's where all my very latest bleeding edge stuff is published. Please hit the like button, share, give yourself a pat on the back, a thumbs up in a mirror, and pigwig out. <laughs>